for the invitation uh, to give me opportunity to to speak. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to talk about motivation. And then I'll get to the main theme. Well, if I'm just getting to here, probably 10 minutes I will be down. So I think I'm just spend the uh, rest of the time going through some of the proofs, which more or less the introduction of another subject, basically. Uh, kind of a, a quick crack course for sympathetic group points. All right, so I'm going to start the motivation of the question, which I want to study. Well, let me start with a, a compact manifold. Uh, well, this is very classical. If you look at cotangent bond of X, it's a sympathetic manifold. And so let's say this is a Y. So Y is holomorphic sympathetic. And, and now X sitting there here at zero section. It's a luck lounging. And the third is well, you can look at here, this is sympathetic, so you have a bracket, put some bracket. And say this map, projection map, the phi, basically, if the function on x, and you got to pull back as a zero. Another way of saying this is, if I put in x as bracket is zero, and then this bracket is preserved. preserved. So, so if I want to put in here, it's so-called trivial uh, Poisson bracket, trivial Poisson bracket. And then basically phi from y to x is a Poisson map. Well, after two weeks of this derived sympathetic geometry, this high category, juicy things, this becomes too, too classical, too, too trivial, I guess. But uh, anyway, I prepared this talk because I, I was told <laughs> this is for students, a lot of students in this, so I just prepared the talk that uh, which is uh, accessible for graduate students. I didn't really know this is so high here. It's, uh, it's, you know. it's not exactly the inner wall, but it's dark. It's a good start for not necessarily the inner Well, <laughs> 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 anyway, so, so this is a uh, basic fact. All right, so what are questions? What I want to do here is what happens if I change in X, kind of a deformation X? So, so what happens? If X is a non-trivial, I will get to it, what is the definition of Poisson manifold. So in some sense, Poisson manifold is 
kind of an infinitesimal deformation while here's a non-commutative deformation in some sense. OF in some sense. This is kind of a bigger sense. We have seen a lot of deformation. Marco gave a deformation, this deformation for compact structure. Here is a kind of a going to the algebra, so it's different. So let me just give you a more precise definition. What is the Poisson structure is? So basically, again, this is probably you have seen already many of the talks before. Well, let me start with the definition. Uh, polymorphic Poisson manifold is a compact manifold X such that OX is a sheaf of Poisson algebra. That's what uh, the most natural way. Another way of saying this is basically X is a holomorphic Poisson. It's the same thing as you have so-called a bivector field. Polymorphic Poisson tensor Scotton bracket equals zero and is holomorphic. So that's another way of saying this. So this is, a, again, I'm pretty sure it's a standard for most of the audience here. Uh, I'll give you examples. Let's say X is CP1, CP1. Well, in this case, this is two-dimensional. So any bivector field, holomorphic bivector field, will be automatically Scott and bracket satisfy this so first condition because the Scott and bracket goes to degree three. So this is automatic. So any bivector field, any pi is a Poisson tensor basically. Define the Poisson structures. So, in particular, uh, it, it's simple to compute the dimension of this guy, and it's non dimensional. So, uh, in fact, it's uh, it parameterized by nine, nine parameters. So I'll give you one example. So if in the FN chart, if you have uh, this FN chart of Z1, Z2, and uh, for instance, uh, Z1, Z2, this is one of the, there will be one of those uh, uh, Poisson bivector field in particular. So, so here's the can put the polynomials, uh, I think up to degree four, but some mixed terms. Uh, so, anyway, so you can write down explicitly all the Poisson structures here. All those are Poisson structures. Uh, CP1 plus CP1. Some simple things. All right. Well, now I'm getting to the question what is the end of I raised the, over here, this uh, three property, which uh, 
which are listed for cotangent bond with T star X to X. So what this is what I call the sympatricularization. Sympathetic realization of a holomorphic Poisson manifold, writing pi is by vector field, is it's just holomorphic sympathetic manifold. Uh, y together with a subjective the motion y two x, which is a puzzle map. All right, so by by Poisson math, what I meant is basically you can pi on y is x or So this, this is the field of pi y is just the inverse of sympathetic structure on y. Or another way of saying this is just the <coughs> again, this is probably too trivial. After all those derived sympathetic. All right, uh, I give you two models. See, give some idea what this could be. It starts something which is not zero. Starts with a compact manifold with a little bit not not bracket to zero. So the easiest model is consider x is just cn, and let's say coordinate z1 to zn. And since I don't want to bracket zero, the easiest bracket I could ask, not zero, is a linear. So it's a linear bracket. Here's a uh, compact number over here. It's very classical theorem. It says this guy is a Poisson. Basically, this is Jacobi identity. It's equivalent to saying this guy is a structural constant. Of a Lie algebra. And normally this is what is referred to uh, Lee Poisson or Kilo Poisson.
All right. Uh, indeed, so I, I, I wrote down this as a local uh, well, coordinate, but for intrinsically, if G is the Lie algebra, uh, let's say Lie algebra G, constant Lie algebra G. And uh, intrinsically, if uh, G is a Lie algebra, the what the Poisson structure will live so will be will be lived in the dual Lie algebra. So that's just all those vector spaces you can think. But G is the same thing as G star, the same thing as the uh, the same thing. The, the way we're just picking coordinates. All right. Uh, in this case, if you let G be a Lie group, here is a compact Lie group with Lie algebra. G, and now you look at a cotangent bond of a G, and you may want to call this as Y. Now I start, my X here is a durably algebra, where I have this bracket over here. And now I do have a map here. So this guy is a sympatic, this is sympatic, so this is a cotangent bundle, again sympatic. And I have a map here, phi, basically just translation. So phi is, you map the PG star G to G identity star G, which is a durability algebra. And I think you use probably left or right translation depending on uh, how you define the Lie algebra, which I never really remember how Lie algebra can be defined uh, by the bracket minus law. So anyway, so this is a this is a translation. This this map here is a Poisson map. So you can see phi is a Poisson map. And this guy sitting here, I call I, basically, again, this is just the unit space of the algebra uh, at identity, which you can sit in as on here, P star G. And this is Lagrangian. Again, you can make this to be Lagrangian. So hopefully this example gave you some kind of flavor. If I'm putting something non-trivial bracket on X, what Y will look like? It's kind of a uh, now you goes to the uh, kind of a territory of groups in some sense. All right. So the main theorem said I need just ten minutes to finish the main theorem is. Join work with uh, the law Google. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Is this the right? No. It's in black. I don't really know how to pronounce my pr collaborator's name. Matthew Stano. Basically, uh, what we proved is that uh, every polymorphic Poisson manifold emits a polymorphic sympathetic Realization why well such that X is embedded as 
alla clange. And why? So, in other words, the question I posed at the beginning is, is yes. All right. So, this is a, a question you can put, a, basically this is a question, really classical, well, complex geometry, if you want to call, or sympathetic geometry. So, basically, you, you want to see if you can, and, and it's, well, except for this case, a Lie group of G, a Lie algebra G, it's hard to visualize what could be the Y. And, in fact, the Y is no longer a cotangent bundle anymore. So, when you get a holomorphic categories, so all those things, is, uh, Y can be tricky, so you don't know what Y looks like, basically, right? So, so this is the, uh, uh, anyway, so that's the main theorem. And I'm down by this main theorem. So, I think I decided to give a little bit of idea how this can be proved. And the proof of the theorem, and based on some techniques of uh, uh, Poisson geometry. Which, this will get to my third topic, uh, which can, you can see a little bit higher, but not too high. It's good point. So one stack, but I, I don't know anything other than one stack or one good point. Or good point. So, so I'm getting, so this is what I'm going to uh, do next, the sympathetic good points, sympathetic good points. And for those people who already know, probably it's a good time just to have a nap. And so, what are sympathetic good points? But on the other hand, I, I feel that amazing that this is a kind of classical theorem. Uh, you could ask this kind of question uh, without, without uh, any, any of uh, uh, high things, right? I mean, uh, I really do not know any proof without using this kind of a technologies uh, uh, to prove this. Uh, all right, oh, so maybe I should mention a little bit history. So before I talk about anything higher, uh, the history of those kind of things. So before I talk about this, probably interesting uh, for the audience. Uh, the sympathetic realization question for real manifold, uh, for real sympathetic realization question, for real, because I'm doing here just the contact well, initially, indeed, really trace, can be traced back by, to Lee, who invented the Lee algebra, Lee group, or whatever. Uh, and it's really important, in fact, in his founding of the Lee series. So, what has this Poisson Lee Poisson come in? So, it's, it's 1890, I believe. But this is like in the local case local Aragor. Case. Local Ragra, so just like small neighborhood, and Ragra means the rank is a constant. So, so well, I, I, yeah, if you don't really, so I don't really want to get too much of a personal geometry, but yeah, so it's just like special case. And, and the, in the local case, uh, non Ragra is due to Weinstein. Uh, 83, I believe, and that's the local but for arbitrary case. And global case is, I think, Kalesu and Weinstein independently around 1987, and that's global case. And actually the seal, I'm gonna get to this later on, just a few minutes of getting to this seal. So this is the, what Simpad group points are. All right. Could you repeat your question? Uh, the sympathetic 
uh, it is not a unique, but you could, after some condition, there's the only distinct one, up to like a tube neighbor, like a very small neighborhood, but, that I, but, but I didn't really say. In general, it is not unique, it's two. And, and, and uh, if you want a uniqueness, more or less, uh, this is something uh, I'm getting to it. But uh, since the, I, I want to state the theorem purely without, uh, without any of uh, Higher, because uh, normally I do things the opposite. This is the audience, so like you don't have to, uh, people read like high stuff. And, <laughs> and most of the times you have to hide those and, and, and you try to present a way that the people don't any group points involved, any, any of those involved, the very, very classical way. So, that, so anyway, so, but you do need, uh, after something this, then it's unique, it will be unique. All right, so what are sympact group points are? Uh, that I would just do, as you see in Asa's talk and Baron Norris talk. So I would do I'll just lead group point and just one, one stack. Well, given lead group point, you can have a no. Which is simplicial manifold. Give you simplicial manifold. Once you have a simplicial manifold, you can construct the drama compacts of simplicial manifold. So here is a Durand differential in the vertical direction, I will write partial, uh, which basically just alternating sum of the face map. So here you have a face map, those are the face map, and you can, uh, so partial is just alternating sum of the face, so you have, since you have this face map, you can have a pullback map to Q So you can have the same number of the face map, and then this guy is just alternating sum. I'm not sure if uh, uh, Baron talked about this, or, but anyway, so this is simple. This is very classical stuff uh, for simplicial manifold. And now uh, this guy is double compact, plus or minus partial, and you have a total. Uh, differential here. So you get a double compact. And so what is sympathetic group point? It's very easy using this definition. It's basically it's also very natural. It's just a sympathetic group point is a lead group point. Equipped with non degenerate two form uh, here. Well, I so not not non, non degenerate two form such that the total differential here. Omega equals zero.
So in other words, in other words, this condition here, you can write down this condition because of degree reason. This condition essentially says two conditions. Basically, uh, omega is close to form, and also, in some sense, they call multiplicative two forms because it's omega two form over here. So if I want to, maybe, well, the picture is probably. Oh, Three here, uh, one, and three, two. Maybe that's the right picture here. So, so, so basically, you want this to be drummy, this close, and then this is a multiplicative, basically. Which is actually a good question. And that's what, uh, and they're adding the sympathetic, uh, not the general condition. A very simple lemma, one can check if this condition is satisfied. Now automatically, so if gamma, omega, a sympathetic group point, and then all the things which I mentioned at the very beginning of the talk, in the real category, I mean, in the real world, the comp uh, real manifold, but it's the same thing for the holomorphic. So basically, uh, gamma zero is a Poisson manifold. Automatically, there's a Poisson structure here, which indeed is induced from the source map or target map. So the source map from gamma one to gamma zero is a Poisson map, is a sympathetic realization automatically it's a subjective submersion, so sympathetic realization. And three is, well, it's, once you have a group point, you have the uh, unit space here, and then the unit space sitting gamma zero to gamma one is a Lagrangian. It's a Lagrangian embedding. So exact what I just say at the beginning. So let me give you a couple examples. Well, I will start the most trivial examples, this example which I just started with. Let's say cotangent bond over M. And now you have source and target map. Both source and target map are just projection map. And the group point structure are just multiplication, uh, just addition, fiber-wise addition. That's group point. It's kind of most stupid group point. Um, and here's a zero, you have a zero bracket there, so it is a, and here is sitting here by Lagrangian, by Lagrangian embedding here. So this is a, uh, a most stupid example. And a little bit less stupid is, uh, is <laughs> uh, the algebra, the second thing which I wanted. So, so you start with the Gs Lee group, and now you look cotangent bundle of G. Again, this case is just cotangent bundle. And, and now since Lie group, you can trivialize by the translation. So this is the same thing as G, G star. And now G can act on G star by adjoint act, co-adjoint action, so you can form transformation group point. So here you have a, a transformation group point. 
by the cojoint action. And so it's a groupoid and has a sympathetic structure which comes from the cotangent bundle. And you can see all the, it is uh, exactly, again, a sympathetic groupoid. And a little bit more interesting than this is start with a finite dimensional Lie algebra, quadratic Lie algebra. with AD invariant, non-degenerate, uh, symmetric pairing, for instance, the compact Lie algebra that works, the Keeling form. And now you can look at loop Lie algebra. Essentially, just one form with valid Lie algebra, G. And it's just connection. So this is just connection. Space of connection on the trivial principal bundle, the most stupid trivial principal bundle, and this is just a few uh, connections. And the l loop group is basically just gauge group. So gauge group acts on the connection by the gauge transformation. which is, a, uh, again, it's a very standard formula. G plus psi is uh, AD, G, and G dot, G inverse, something like this, if I remember correctly. So here G is uh, uh, So G is uh, LG, psi is Lie algebra. Uh, again, there's a way to put so this is a simple group point again. So I have uh, here you have a gauge transformation. So here you have a transformation group point again. And the sympathetic structure is a little bit more tricky. I'm going to skip it. So anybody interested, in, we can discuss later on. And basically, the sympathetic structure here, uh, it's not, not a cotangent bundle anymore, not a cotangent anymore. It comes from, uh, basically, you need to use quadratic. You, you need to use this uh, uh, killing form, uh, no, uh, this, this pairing over here. So it's so related to, uh, the, uh, yeah. So to get sympathetic structure over here. And the Poisson structure here is no longer linear. It's affine. Uh, given by the this cycle, canonical cycle associated with this uh, uh, pairing. And then apparently this is uh, related to Joyce. And so for those people who are interested in staff, uh, what I'm trying to say over here is uh, what I want to say here. Uh, yeah, so here, if I look at the associated stack to this group point, uh, one, can, one can prove this is the same thing as G over G, where G acts on this by conjugation, by conjugation. So, it's, 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 uh, this is the same stack, G acts on G by conjugation. So, in other words, this guy, uh, has uh, well, well, I'm getting to it. 
And now, that, well, maybe maybe I want to. It's worth spending a little bit time. So uh, let me let me just write down this the picture. We have seen this in Baron's talk and uh, uh, Arthur's talk, more or less. For me, for differential stacks, the one stack, which is Lee group points, and you can put more of the equivalence over here. Well, and now for sympathetic structure, you expect that you got a sympathetic group point, right? I mean, a sympathetic group point is kind of a stack here, uh, which it, in fact is true. Um, Well, but there's some issue here. I'll probably, uh, I suppose I have like a 10 minutes or something. Is it? So maybe just, uh, yeah, uh, to get my main theorem is very easy proof. So it's probably worth uh, uh, mentioning this. Uh, uh, especially, yeah, thanks Ezra, who has a lot of chances speaking to different groups of people. So I kind of live my own world, so I was not. <laughs> Very small world, even I, I can't say it's small, it's a tiny world. That, uh, so, so, anyway, so there's a lot of uh, uh, juicy things uh, about uh, sympathetic stack, degree one, a uh, derived stack, sympathetic stack. So, I want to point out is that, in fact, that this way is gave you a very natural candidate of degree one, shift to degree one sympathetic stack. So, so how do you see this picture over here? So I just probably like five minutes, I try to get to that point. All right, so I already gave you, so let's say this picture over here is an e-group point, module moderate equivalence is more or less a stack. That's kind of a geometric way for, for me to look at the stack. Uh, and, but this, the problem is the sympathetic structure, which I just defined over there, is not so good when you pass around the moderate equivalence. For instance, let me, uh, when you do the moral equivalent, so, so basically this is too strong, non-degeneracy on the sympathetic form and the face, uh, on the uh, morphism is too strong because when you get moral equivalence, uh, you, uh, for instance, when, when you do the moral equivalent, you normally, another like the moral morphism, you take kind of covering or suggest some motion, so here the, you take suggest some motion, and you will pull back this group point, this quotation product. So, so basically, you're getting <coughs> um, so here, if I have uh, uh, some suggested some motion, rho, and maybe PR projection over here. So if I have a two form over here, which is non-degenerate, initially I would just define the sympathetic as non-degenerate. But when you pull back to here, it's obviously it's no longer non-degenerate anymore, right? I mean, there's no reason to require it to be non-degenerate. Two form are pulled back. You only get uh, pre-sympathetic. You only get pre-sympathetic, but non-degeneracy violates. So, so one thing you might want to want to do is relax a little bit of a non-degenerate condition that it still will preserve under moral equivalence. And that's what uh, I want to explain this condition, what it's so-called weak non-degenerate condition. So if I have a two form, let's say I'm getting, again, this is a two group point, it's a Lee group point, and this is two form, um, gamma one. Well, which is multiplicative, by partial delta equals zero. Well, Draw a picture over here, and this is a gamma zero. This guy's gamma zero, and and now you have a source map 
the fiber, and this is source fiber. So the total space is, let's say, gamma 1. Uh, here, I want a relaxed non-degenerate condition, but I do not uh, too much relax it. So basically, all, since this condition tells you more or less you can forget about by way, you only need to look at unit space over here, gamma zero. So, so initially, non-degenerate, you want uh, everything non-degenerate everywhere here, but here you want to relax a little bit, the, but it's not too much. So the condition basically is for arbitrary, say, here, arbitrary point over here, and you want to look at a kernel, you want some kind of a control of a kernel of this sympathetic form. Oh, no, no, it's a two form. On this direction. And now you also look at a kernel intersect with the unit space here, which is the uh, tangent space of gamma zero. And there's a natural mass between this and this by just the projection of the target mass. So this is a T star. And this is one isomorphism. So, in other words, you want a, a kind of a control with this two non-degenerate condition that it's not too much, both the, on the fiber and the, on the, on the uh, unit space. So if you like, this guy is what uh, calls the Lee Elge voice. I know that. And this is just the, this guy is just anchor map. This is just anchor map. And all, I think the, yesterday, Kai was telling me this is a, what algebra geometry was using. What is that? This is a T gamma zero. And this is a T, so how was that? Anyway, forget about it. it, it basically, this is a, this is a in, in the talk for Tony Panta for L stuff. So his L is a do of this. So this is the L star. All right. And so why do I need this condition? Let me just add one mark uh, so that I answer the question as I want to have asked uh, a little bit. Well, so, so, so basically, this non-degenerate condition here is the non-degeneracy condition uh, here is guarantee that you have, now you have a two form over here. Once you have a two form, you can induce a map from basically from the, this tangent quotient space. One can prove that you have an inducer map between uh, and still, I guess, the other way around. Uh, by, the, by the two forms. So basically, this condition make you isomorphism, make you isomorphism between those two. Um, and that's what is really the geometric meaning of a non-degenerate condition, non-degenerate condition of, uh, of this stuff over here. This one in my paper, so the JDG paper. Yeah, JDG paper, a, a decade ago. So it's, uh, it's two, published in 203. So basically, you want to, if you look at this condition, exactly the condition, you want to L, uh, you want to, what are those, uh, those uh, uh, dwarfed, whatever, uh, <laughs> you want L1 to be isomorphic to this condition. The omega, you want the isomorphism. And you look at this isomorphism, exactly this is this condition you spare out. You spare out, the, in this case, of a group point. And then you want this non degenerate condition. Exactly you want the non That's how I come to this condition over here. All right. 
So, so this is a, a kind of a uh, ideal behind how this not your condition is. So what is the, so if you relax a little bit, so what is the, Well, it turns out this condition is very nice. I want to just put in a lemma here. It's uh, uh, for people probably interested in uh, those, uh, 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 well, jobs or those things. It's uh, very natural to see this condition. It's very nice. Basically, the following. If omega is weak and non-degenerate, and so is the pullback what I said over here, when you pull back this weak condition, is preserved. <coughs> and also, it is preserved by so-called uh, B transformation. B transformation, again, it's weak, uh, non degenerate so is the omega plus partial B, which is just omega plus soft minus T star B. And the B is just two form on the unit, on the space of a unit. So this is so-called B transformation. So uh, it turns out this weak, more the, uh, weak non-degen condition uh, preserves the better than the strict one under this kind of transformation. And, and so what is the, can be called the quasi-synthetic group are just a legal point a with now you may want to relax a little bit not only two form on the unit space you want to three form on the uh, no two form on the morphism and you will also want a three form on the unit space, such that <coughs> just the delta, this guy is zero. This is kind of the case closeness condition, and then weak is weak <coughs> non-degenerate. And So, what I, the, the dictionary, what I probably want to just, this is all in mark, it's a kind of long remark, is basically, if you look at this quasi sympathetic group point, and now you have more equivalence, and this more or less is the same thing as degree one, shifted degree one sympathetic stack. which pants off in order for people who want to take those situations of synthetic stack. All right, so that gets to the, let me just finish. I have two minutes. Oh, you still have five more minutes? I just need two minutes to finish uh, my theorems. <laughs> so I go back to the theorem. All right, this is a kind of detour. Luma, all right. So I go back to the this proof of a theorem, which I want to say. In fact, it relies heavily one, one theorem, which I just mentioned. It's a theorem by, so now I go back to the simple group point. And tens, it, 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 it due to Kasu, a wine stand, independently, 
around 87 and proved it in very different ways in kind of patching. And then McKenzie and myself kind of uh, explained using Leo for pictures like a uh, Dunfeld series. Basically, using the, uh, we used the Dunfeld theory of uh, Poisson Lee groups uh, to get an uh, explanation of the theorem. Essentially, the theorem is very, very simple to say. Yeah, it's just for real Poisson manifold. So I was putting real here, Poisson manifolds. Giving any real Poisson manifolds, you can kind of bijection to get a synthetic local. Now you have local group point. Synthetic local. Local means you just the group point is uh, you may go out, but you don't care. Uh, synthetic local group point. Whenever. In other words, you're giving real Poisson manifold, you can get uh, a local synthetic group point, therefore you have synthetic realization, which I have all the conditions, and vice versa. So, so that's kind of a, uh, a new theorem. And what we proved, basically so now, 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 now this is the real world, and now it's giving, assume pi is a holomorphic Poisson. So once you have holomorphic Poisson, uh, you can write because this guy is 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 uh, is uh, sub well you can think of have you can really write the imaginary and the real part. So you can split this into two parts, pi r and pi i. You can really split the real and imagine part. And it turns out so if this is holomorphic Poisson, so it turns out. A given by vector field is a holomorphic Poisson is equivalent to is just a real is again a Poisson, but then you have all J is almost compact structure, which is integrable. And this guy, so called, is a Poisson Neihaus structure. And for those people who are doing uh, integrable systems, uh, this is a kind of standard uh, for integral system. Uh, in other words, it's just Poisson structure with nine, well, holom this almost compact structure with Neihaus tends to zero, so it's kind of compact Lewis condition. And, and what we proved essentially with the, uh, no, is, uh, uh, what we proved the essentially is start with uh, uh, start with uh, this pi r. You use this, you get a simpel group point. It's automatically holomorphic. Holomorphic structure comes automatically for free. So that's already so th that's basically uh, the proof of uh, uh, so if gamma. Uh, X. No, local. Oh, yeah, because I only talk about simplification. You see, so I I don't care about group point structure. I forget the group point. I only need a realization. So 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 if this guy is uh whatever my postal. No, it's in the all sense. That, I, that, was, that was like a kind of side mark, a uh, mark, yeah, a okay. mark. That's basic for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if if gamma one gamma uh, would x whatever is a sympathetic group point, real sympathetic group point, sympathetic group point, local, corresponding to. To pi r. Now it's real. You can get a simple group point automatically. Then automatically, I'll probably write it here. Then gamma one 
F is holomorphic sympathy decoy. So, in other words, uh, automatically this guy is complex manifold, uh, which is in, uh, which is compatible with other structure. So, so then you get a sim holomorphic sympathization. So, our uh, the way the punch point here is when you work using this spool point point of view, and the complex integrability of a complex structure comes for free. So automatically you get a complex variety, complex manifold. No, uh, complex manifold. I'm looking only working on complex manifold. But uh, obviously, all the cotangent bundle orders don't see anyone. In the real world, the local is still cotangent bundle. But in this case, we have the, well, what the X gamma looks like. This, uh, so I think it stops here. Yeah.